back, you're watching Overdrive. Now, it's been a very bad year for General Motors globally, but in India, the company has tasted success with the Chevrolet Spark and the Captiva. It's now the turn of the Chevrolet Cruze sedan, and Bert took it out for a spin in Baroda. We all know what the American economy, and especially the American auto manufacturers, had to go through since last year. General Motors especially went through hell. First, there was the slew of sellouts to reduce its bloated portfolio. Then, there were the major cutbacks. Employees being shown the door formed mile-long queues. And finally, this year, GM, once the largest automaker in the world, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Tough times indeed. We've seen several automotive manufacturers falling onto hard times. But then, this decade will also see stories emerge of how quite a few of those manufacturers managed to climb out of the mess they got themselves in. So by early next year, you're going to see the launch of several new books. <laughs> yes, how to make the government pay your bills, cash for clunkers and other lifelines, how Asia saved the day. And then there's the biggest bestseller of them all, General Motors, from big block to small block. And that story will tell you just how General Motors went from making rubbish cars to smart, sensible and very good value for money cars. Cars such as the Captiva, the Volt, the new Spark, and of course, there's this, the Chevrolet Cruze. This is the car that best champions Chevrolet's new design direction, which can be clearly seen in the stylish twin pot grille, chiseled hood, raked headlamps, and even the edgy and strong rear end. The styling is very impressive, lending the Cruze a sporty stance from almost every angle. And the coupe-like silhouette adds volumes to its on-road presence. In fact, from certain angles, the cruise looks like a compact BMW. The cruise has a very funky interior with this nicely laid out dashboard. It's aesthetically very pleasing. All the control knobs are just where they belong. And it's got these nice black, grey and chrome highlights that just lift up this interior. However, there is one problem with this cabin and it's short on space. Because the wheelbase is short, the rear seat is pushed further ahead and that reduces the interior space in this cabin. Makes it very cramped and uncomfortable. Yet General Motors India has made every effort to ensure maximum comfort. So the rear passenger seat has been re-engineered to ensure better thigh support and a deeper recess allows you to breathe freely. When the cruise is launched in India in the next few weeks, you're gonna have a choice of actually strike that you're not going to have a choice of engines or transmission because the cruise is going to come with just one diesel engine and one transmission, a five-speed manual transmission. Now the diesel engines, a two-liter variable geometry turbocharged common rail direct injection diesel engine. You've already driven it in the Captiva, but here in the cruise it makes 150 PS of max power and 320 Newton meters of max torque. Now that's fantastic credentials for a car like this, for a diesel sedan. It takes it to a top speed of about 200 kilometers per hour and does a 0 to 100 in about 10 seconds. At high speeds, the cruise feels stable and planted. It does get a bit unsettled in strong crosswinds, but without exaggerating the sensation to the passengers. The steering is not the most precise I have seen, yet it is accurate and well balanced. The ride quality though impresses them most. The all-independent suspension has impressive articulation and it does not let you feel a thing. It is a bit firm but never harsh and makes every drive on our kind of roads comfortable. So you may not have engine and transmission options yet. Nevertheless, GM is still offering its consumers trim level choices. So there's the LT and the top of the line LTZ and both of these are separated by a price difference about a lakh and a half rupees. So what do you get additionally for that lakh and a half? Well, in the LTZ, you get cruise control, you get a 6CD changer, you get climate control, you get rain sensors, there's leather upholstery everywhere, color-coded dashboard, and most important of all, you get a keyless entry and ignition. Now, General Motors hopes to position the cruise in the NTD segment, pitting it against the likes of the Laura diesel. And the grapevine indicates a sticker price in the vicinity of 14 lakh rupees. It sounds expensive, yet you do get a lot of goodies for that kind of pricing. And given its only drawback could be its interior space, the cruise could turn out to be fairly good value for money. 
GM's hopes, or should I say resurrection, is pinned on cars such as this, the Chevrolet Cruze. It has the potential to become a great car, but then its competition is also very strong indeed. It will need more than just good pricing and good after-sales service backup. It will need a whole lot of luck to get that one step ahead of its competitors. As for just how great and how good this car is, only a comprehensive road test and a shootout will tell us. So keep watching out for that one. Well, the cruise is going to be critical for General Motor India's long-term future. On that note, it's time for us to talk about Overdrive Garage. This is the segment where we take you beyond the first drive or the first look of a car and bike. We tell you about long-term ownership implications. This week, it's the turn of the Maruti A-Star, which completes six months with Team Overdrive. So here's our verdict. The latest in a long list of hot hatches to enter the Overdrive fleet, our long-term A-Star arrived just in time for the Overdrive Awards jury round in December and went straight into the hands of Rally Ace Gaurav Gill. Well, this is the Maruti A-Star we've got in the new car and we've got 120 kilometers an hour and we go really hard on the brakes. I think in the 4 lakh bracket, this makes the max sense, it's got decent amount of space, very good interiors, I think I especially like the, the rev counter, which is very sporty. After its rather frantic initiation, the A-Star settled down into the overdrive garage and after a few days behind the wheel, darting in and out of city traffic, the team were all praised for the A-Star's unconventional interiors. As Marutis go, the A-Star is pretty much standard. That's in terms of fit and finish, plastic quality and stuff. But inside, everything that you would normally expect is there, but it's just not in the places you expect it. This takes 10 minutes of getting used to, but once you do, it's brilliant. What will really plaster the smile onto your face is the mileage. Our car returned an average of 13 to 14 kilometers per liter throughout its stint with Team Overdrive. It went through two routine services, the second included replacing a dented front panel and kept right on going. In fact, after six months and over 6,000 kilometers, the only things we could possibly crib about is the evident lack of space in the rear and the rather tinny music system. You've got four lakh rupees to blow on a small car. Now what would you buy? You can buy a whole load of second-hand cars, nice big cars, or you can buy a new Hyundai i10 or the Maruti Suzuki A-Star. Now, personally, I've always preferred the i10, chiefly because I'm not small and I don't fit inside the backseat of the A-Star. But I've come to realize that the 1.1-liter i10 isn't available with airbags or ABS. The A-Star, it is. And that's why I think this makes for the best buy in the small, small car segment. That's a wrap on this episode of Overdrive. Remember, you can catch all our special shows, whether it's the small car comparison from Ladakh or the SUV comparison from the run of Kach on our website, www.overdrive.in.